Day one of the 1986 Rothman Circuit of Ireland rally. It's 8.30 on Good Friday morning in front of the best known landmark in Belfast, the City Hall. It's from here that the cars will start and on this day they have 10 special stages ahead of them taking in 95 miles in a broad clockwise loop around Loch Ney. Then on they go on their Circuit of Ireland to finish up here just before two on Tuesday. Now the cars are due to leave from here in one minute intervals from nine o'clock. Right now, they're being organised on the Strand Millis Embankment, about two miles away, and with them there is Gary Gillespie. Yes, George, and here at Strand Millis Embankment, the top ten cars are forming up, headed, of course, by number one, Hanu Mikola. Hanu, did you sleep well last night? Yes, very well. No last-minute problems? No, not at all. Car has been ready for a few days already, so it has been very good. So, what's the plan this morning? It's a nice, bright start to the day. Will you be going fast right from the beginning? Oh, I try to drive the, you know, so fast I can. The, if uh, the information is uh, true, it will not be very long time the bright like it is now. They already told us that it might be snow. Well, Russell Brooks, the morning started in sunshine, but it's getting a little bit grayer now. Yes. What do you think for the, the, for the prospects for the weather this morning? Well, I see the weather forecast is uh, for sleet or maybe even a bit of snow on very high ground. And uh, I think it's going to be typical of an early Easter, really. I mean, we're going to have a bit of sunshine and a lot of rain. Uh, maybe even a bit of snow and sleet here and there. It's going to be very difficult conditions to choose tyres for. What are you going to do at the beginning? You're going to go very fast to try and uh, establish yourself right at the, the top of the leaderboard and to forget about the supercars? It's difficult to know what to do, really. I mean, we want to win this rally. I mean, we're not here to finish second or third, really. And uh, the problem is our car is 265 horsepower and uh, even the metros are 380 and the quattro is 500. And I think the, the answer is we cannot afford to let them get away from us because then they can take it easy if there's perhaps one or two left in the end. We've got to go very hard right from the word go and just see what happens. Kelly Grindle, people are saying that your RS200 is going to be very fast, but it might not last throughout the entire event. What do you think? Yeah, I think the car is very good and I think it's good here in these bumpy stages, but uh, in this event I think it's no sense to try to do 100% attack. So I think we have to go a little bit careful and I'm not used to this event and I have never been here, so I will be careful and see how fast the others are driving and then we will see what's happened. So we have no idea where we are standing. Jimmy McRae, a great start to your Metro career and the national breakdown. How do you think you're going to go on the circuit? Well, we've done quite a bit of testing with the car and I'm very happy with it. You know, the car's very quick and it's very good on the, the tarmac, so we're, we're hoping for good things. Is it ready to finish a circuit of Ireland, though? Well, that's the, the big problem, I suppose. We don't really know. The, the, even the worst cars haven't done as t tough an event as this, and it is the toughest event, so I think initially we just take it a bit easy just to see you know, how everything's going to work. But I'm sure the car is quick enough to win the event. But Billy Coleman, this time last year you were having your first competitive drive in the Porsche. I think it took you just a little while to get to grips with it, but now it could be a different story. I hope it will be anyway, Gary. Um, as you say, last year I, I was very ill at ease with the car. It was my first, first rally in it, and um, 12 months later now, um, I feel very confident with the car. And uh, mind you, the opposition has... Uh, Got a bit tougher in the meantime as well, but... Well, you, you started the season in great form in Galway, and of course uh, you have once more the, the camera inside the car. Are you used to that now? That's right, yeah. Uh, I suppose I can't really make any mistakes with, with the camera, so that's uh, something to look out for. But I think uh, the weather is going to be crucial in this rally more than ever, because there's a lot of talk about snow, and with the four-wheel drive cars, even in dry conditions, they've got an advantage, but if, if it turns snowy uh, or slush, they have a huge advantage, so... Uh, I just hope it doesn't get too, uh, too wintry. And of course, the man with the second Rothmans Porsche, Saeed Al Hajri, also has a camera in the car, but this time it's right down at the front. Saeed, what sort of pictures do you think we're going to get from this camera? First thing, I hope this camera in good uh, safety place, you know, because if anything happens, this camera is going to break down, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think this camera is going to uh, take very good shots for the ride. Well, the first of the Northern Ireland competitors, Dan Daly. Dan, it really is a question of the, the privateers not having much of a chance against these massive works teams. Well, I would agree with you, Gary, there. You have no chance at all. The only, problem, the only thing you have to do is try and stay on the road, keep the car going, get her to the finish in Belfast on Tuesday. It's a long, hard struggle for a privateer such as myself. The car is totally self-prepared. Uh, it's 
prepared in her own garage, her own listing franchise in Belfast, and uh, it's the full work specification, so we can't do any better than that. Well, Frank Fennell, not just a rally car, but a, a rally car equipped with a tremendous telecommunication system. Tell us about that. Uh, well, it's only been fitted yesterday, uh, but we look forward to uh, phoning home and phoning uh, Michael over there, and uh, our service crew, uh, Richard Lyons, his wife has a telephone as well, so perhaps we'll talk to her as well. But uh, it's nice to be able to keep in touch. I don't think you'll have much time once you get onto the stages, though, to, to make any telephone calls. Uh, no, and we want to make sure it doesn't ring during the action either. Well, so far this morning, the only panic has been the late arrival of Austin McHale, whose Opel Manta was very late in arriving at the embankment. But there's no time control here. He didn't incur any penalties, and there doesn't seem to be any real problem. So the scene is set for the Circuit of Ireland 1986. Now we are waiting for the start. Miss Northern Ireland flags away the world's most successful rally driver, Hanno Mikola, in the Audi Quattro S1. Behind him, the RS200 of Cali Grundle, Ford's first serious challenge for victory in eight years. Then last year's winner, Jimmy McRae, this time in a Metro 6R4. He could equal Paddy Hopkirk's all-time record of five wins by Easter Tuesday. Stage one, and almost unbelievably, the drama of the 1986 event has started already. Grundle, not Mikula, is the first car through. Jimmy McRae follows, bedding his new car in gently, but still deceptively fast. Billy Coleman attacks right from the word go as we take our first lightning trip inside the Porsche. Hard right to crest. Repeat, hard right to crest. Hard right now. Hard left opens. 40. Sharp left. 60. Sharp right into bad left. Crest into square right. And sharp left. 70 over long crest, last pole, bad right. That is Mikola stranded on the stage. Bad right. Saeed El Hajri in the second Rothmans Porsche is about to show us the same piece of road from his low level camera, a first for rally television coverage. But back inside Coleman's car in stage two, we come across a greater problem. Kelly Grundle's Ford is parked in a gateway. From above, we see that the driver's left with no choices. There are spectators in the road. Kelly approaches the bend. There are two boys in the road. One escapes, but the other is hit. Luckily, he only suffers chest and leg injuries. A terrifying incident in a morning which generally saw excellent behavior. The Metro's lead, Jimmy McRae and Di Llewellyn after stage one. Billy Coleman is now third in the Rothmans Porsche. Harry Toivonen, fourth overall in the 6R4 Metro and Russell Brooks, fifth in the Manta 400. Michael Sundstrom is sixth in the 205 Turbo 16. He takes it very gently here. And Austin McHale really flying in seventh place. El Hajri is in eighth and about to run into trouble as he approaches a flat out right-hander after a very, very fast straight. still want to be a rally driver? Miraculously, the only damage was to the lights and the rear bumper. 
Mark Lovell in the more fortunate Ford heralds the arrival of Mikola, who is desperately trying to stay in the event. And now the sorry sight has grundled tours to the end of the stage, his supercar showing the marks of that horrifying accident. The future of Ford in the rally is in question as Lovell checks into the service area at Dungannon. Team manager Peter Ashcroft examines a tricky situation very closely. So I think it's an isolated incident. Um, I've spoken briefly to Cali and told him to continue through the third stage. Uh, I think what happened was, there was he came through a corner and two people were walking in the road with the, their backs to him. Uh, they went to move to the right off the road and then one took it into his mind to go across the road to the left. And Cali had no chance to miss him at all. He just hit him um, with a front right-hand rear wing. Um, I, I think it's very sad and uh, I'm concerned about, obviously, about the person concerned. I think he's broken a leg. I don't think he's too seriously hurt. I hope not. Um, really, our decision as to whether we carry on is Cali's and how he feels about it. Um, I think the organisation's been good. There's a lot of spectator control cars out. Crowd control seems to be good. I think it's just an isolated incident. For Jimmy McRae and the Banters in general, it's been a much more pleasant morning. Taking it very quietly and learning the car, but the car's very quick between the corners, so it's, it's, uh, we've had no problems and everything's going according to plan. Looks like a Metro 1-2 at the moment. Yeah, but we've a long way to go. <laughs> it's, very, it's very early days. The cars are running well. <laughs> what sort of servicing are you doing here now? We're raising the car slightly because it seems to be a bit low in the very bumpy, narrow roads and uh, just generally checking the car. Hanno Mikola, you've had uh, quite a bit to do to your car. Yes, uh, you know, we had a clutch problem. The other of those uh, main cylinders got stuck and uh, it took quite a while for me to, to get it loose on the stage. Uh, so we lost 14 minutes. That's a lot. That's a lot, yes. And then you've, you've had more problems since and I see them building a front wing on your car. Yeah, we had a puncture on the third one, three miles before the end and uh, this uh, punctured tire just uh, rip off the, uh, uh, this uh, one of the wings. I seem to recall some years ago you had a bad start to was it the Scottish rally? Yes. And you had a drive out of a ditch and yeah. still you went on to win it. Yes, yes. So it's not over yet? No, you know, this is a long one. Uh, maybe it's not possible to win, but uh, we will see. Maybe we can do a good result. Mikola's problems are normal in rallying, but the shattered windscreen of Cali Grundle's car signified a much deeper despair. The accident was unavoidable, but now the Swedish driver has to unscramble his agonized thoughts and go back into that competition. Understandably, he did not want to talk about it. By early afternoon, the cars are heading north to Banty Bridge. On the previous stage, there was a three-way tie for the fastest time between Brooks, Llewellyn and Grundle. Jimmy McRae's Metro suffered from steering problems. Could only manage 10th fastest. That cost him the lead. But here at Banty Bridge, he's trying hard to restore his supremacy. Billy Coleman is maintaining his top five position in the Rothmans Porsche 911. Everything looks calm and relaxed from the air, but inside the car, it's hard work. Easy bump, 200. Bridge, keep left, fast jump, 30. Easy bump, 200 gates. Right over crest, bump, 30 bridge. Left, slow right over bump. To slow left over crest, 100. Turn head, then left. 200. Easy right over crest, stay in, one half. Special stage five is 7.68 miles long. Coleman does it in seven minutes, 15 seconds, but he's still only sixth fastest. He too has an anxious moment with spectators. And easy left, 30. Mid right, 100 bridge. Slide left, 400. Sharp right, 1 
quarter. Mickey Chop right in one quarter. Mark Lovell in the second Ford RS 200 has made a solid start to the circuit on the day after his 26th birthday. The young Englishman is last year's national rally champion, and he'd love to have a circuit win to his credit. Dubliner Austin McHale has also made a steady start in his new Opel Manta 400. Although not as powerful as the supercars of rallying, the Manta is still capable of victory. And McHale wants to be there at the finish. After his excursion into the scenery earlier in the day, Middle East champion Saeed Al Hajri has settled down again and takes no chances through a wet spot. But honours on stage five go to Finnish star Michael Sundstrom, who hasn't looked spectacular but has been recording some very fast times. Here at Bunty Bridge, he's a full five seconds ahead of the field. And as the cars head off to the next stage, you can see just how popular rallying has become and the problems that popularity can cause. The long line of traffic leading into Tobermore was also repeated in Cookstown and Macrofelt, among other places. David Llewellyn, who so nearly won the first round of the British Championship, the National Breakdown Rally, is proving it was no fluke. He's a second quicker than McRae over Tully Crear and Bridge. The Metro domination continues. Sundstrom will tie with Coleman here, three seconds slower than the leader. But the Irishman can take comfort in being the best placed of the two wheel drive cars. Russell Brooks, in the ultimate development of the Manta 400, is now heading towards his favourite North Antrim stages. And Austin McHale, in the so-called welterweight shell Opal Manta, must be happy with his sixth place at this stage of the event. But if Hanu Mikola is going to retain his championship lead, it'll mean driving at 10 tenths for the next four days, with Quattro certainly moving at a cracking pace. Cali Grundle, now with lights ablaze, is also trying to make up for lost time. But by the time Louise Aiken Walker arrives, the weather has worsened and her Nissan 240RS is caught out on the wrong tyres. Russell Brooks, the Glendon stage, is a home from home. It was where he took the lead in the Ulster Rally and again he is fastest over at this time. The Mantas seem to revel in it. Austin McHale is almost over the edge in the Shell Oil Steeler Opal Team Ireland car. And the charging Nicola lifting a wheel as the 500 brake horsepower goes down on the road with the Audi Quattro. 58th place after his troubles in the early stages, and the Quattro is eating up the lower numbers. Callie Grundle is now 35th, knuckling down to the job like a true professional. But his heart can hardly be in it. Next, the ever-exciting Penti Auricula, leading Group A. And no wonder. Coleman comes up the other side of the valley in the equally spectacular or a large stage. Even if the scenic glens of Antrim are not at their best, there's plenty of good vantage points. The hairpin at Aura Lodge is not the place to be stuck in second gear, and that's Mark Lovell's problem. Mikola seems to ascend even quicker than the descent. He will make up six places in these nine miles to make him 19th overall. Cyril Bolton in the Clubman specification, press part 6R4, is now in the top ten. Ahead of him, Vincent Bonner, ninth overall. 
Evidence of rally misfortunes of the past are everywhere as John Price in 24th place in the Renault 5 Turbo is trying to make up places. Then come the two 240 RS Nissans belonging to Englishman Simon Davidson and Belfast driver Dan Daly. Look closely at this Astra because Andrew Wood has been on his roof on stage four. Up to then, he had been in close combat for the category with Penty Auricula, who has now got a four minute lead in his mobile telephone box. Penty is repeating his form on the opening round of the British Championship, and the former circuit winner has been on top from the start. So we actually were leading from the start. Uh, we have a new car, and it uh, seems to handle very well. And also, I think uh, we have a right type of tyre, so we've been very lucky and happy. <laughs> Rain was falling on the penultimate stage of the day at Sala, but Billy Coleman kept up the two-wheel drive challenge just a minute off the pace. Mid-left stay in, 60 kink. Easy left, 500 over crest, white line. Slight left opens, 600. Repeat, slight left opens, 600. Right flat, and left flat over crest, 200. Stage 10 at Boyd's Quarry, a special treat for the spectators at the end of the day. A chance to see their heroes up close on a closed circuit. in plenty from the man who's been providing us with some spectacular pictures, Saeed Al-Hajri. One belonged to a Welshman, David Llewellyn, who snatched the lead in the middle of the day and refused to give it up. I would have been quite happy to be in the top five at the end of the first day. Um, I've, I've gone nice and steadily, um, and I'm in the position I am because uh, a few of the other people have had problems. Hanno stopped 13 minutes on the first stage, and uh, Callie Grandel had an unfortunate incident with a spectator and um, Jimmy had a small problem with his steering, so perhaps we're a little bit lucky to be in the position we are. Now, you'll have seen that horrifying incident earlier in the program. The latest word on the youngster who was knocked down during stage two is that he's been transferred from Craig Avon to the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast. His condition is serious but stable. Bill Martin is the clock of the course. Now, you were very keen to make everybody aware that rallying is dangerous. It's almost as if you foresaw something like this happening. Well, unfortunately, uh, the organizers of this event and of all events in the world are well aware of the dangers of rallying, and it's something that we've been trying to point out to the public over the last 12 months, and especially over the last couple of months. Uh, I think the incident today has just highlighted the dangers. Unfortunately, the sport has grown in popularity at a far quicker rate than the public have grown in their awareness of the dangers involved with the sport. Given the fact that stages take place on what are otherwise open roads, so there's free access. Are you satisfied that you're doing all you can? We're satisfied with the measures that we have taken on this year's event. And the heartening thing, despite the incident which happened today, is that uh, the competitor involved, and in fact the other crews, 
have commented on the standard of safety that has been employed on this event. So there it is, day one of the 1986 Rothman Circuit of Ireland rally, and a bit of a surprise at the top of the leaderboard. David Llewellyn there in the four-wheel drive Metro, the new Metro, is leading them in. And look at who's in second place, Jimmy McRae, who won it last year in the Opel Manta. He's in another four-wheel drive Metro, and he's number two. And making it a one, two, three for the new four-wheel drive cars, the Peugeot driven by Michael Sundstrom. Yes, they've really come good in the first day of the 1986 circuit. Now, in fourth place, Billy Coleman, the leading Irishman. All the eyes of Cork are on him, and they'll be smiling tonight because Coleman is only a minute behind the leader, Llewellyn. Just a minute between them.